I shall cut his hair. <gasps> Not yet, kid. Sorry. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best times that SNL tackled pop culture and or the entertainment industry in general. I'm reminding all of you, children, especially all of you. Number 20, Star Wars Undercover Boss, Star Killer Base. Undercover Boss, Star Killer Base. Taking on his character Kylo Ren, Adam Driver finds a way to make the villain a great comedic presence. You get so caught up in restoring the galaxy to its rightful state that you miss what's going on behind the scenes. I'm looking forward to having some real talk with some real folks. This parody of Undercover Boss and Star Wars manages to do justice to both properties. Ren is terrible at disguising himself, setting up some hilarious interactions with co-workers. Okay, okay, it's real easy. All you gotta do is rewire the calcinator. So remove this? Does that look like the calcinator? What's wrong with you? Why, why it's so hard for you to understand? I don't know, but can you please stop yelling me? You're starting to stress me out. Driver also has amazing comic timing for such a dramatic actor. His role here as an emotionally stunted boss never fails to make us laugh, with the villain showing off his lightsaber and force powers. You can even watch a sequel revisiting the greatness of this first entry. So hey, what do you guys think? When Kylo Ren offers Rey his hand for the second time, do you think she'll take it? Who cares? I do. I do. Number 19, Weekend Update, Rachel from Friends on 90s Nostalgia. In this Weekend Update segment, Vanessa Bayer shows off her spectacular impression of the Friends character. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Oh, yeah. I'm, a, uh, uh, I'm you know, I'm, a, uh, I'm good. Her version of Rachel comes complete with a great haircut and an impressive vocal impersonation. She's able to capture Jennifer Aniston's iconic role and even play opposite the real actress. Vanessa, Vanessa, what are you doing? <laughs> what? Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, hi. Wait, but can you just can you just drop that for a second? Aniston comes by to critique the performance, giving audiences a real-time comparison that's especially funny. The pair have a hilarious exchange about how the guest star's voice really sounds. I mean, all it kind of just sounds like all you're doing is like, what? Oh, what? Me? Oh, wow. No. I get what? what? Yes. Wow. Is it At one point, the two performers both trade off catchphrases in another highlight. This entertaining sketch ultimately serves as a fitting tribute to a classic show. Number 18, Hobbit Office. This might rank as one of the strangest combinations ever in an SNL skit. Yeah, so the brave Hobbit Bilbo Baggins now works at a paper company, <clears throat> selling paper rings over the phone. And I drive a Jetta. Despite the degree of difficulty, the cast and writers find a way to blend both The Hobbit and The Office into one funny idea. There are references galore as the performers take Middle Earth characters into the corporate world. The good man comes to me and says, thank you Gandalf, general manager, for this job. I say, okay, you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? It's as absurd as it sounds, while also being full of hilarious gags and pranks. There's also an impressive amount of detail when it comes to the wardrobe and makeup. With Martin Freeman bringing his A-game, he joins comedic talents like Bobby Moynihan as they goof around in a bizarre and satisfying cocktail. Uh, well, you don't choose the people you work with. Number 17, The Sopranos Diaries. What did the characters in The Sopranos do in high school? This sketch answers that question with some funny impressions, while also taking inspiration from the Carrie Diaries. It includes Bobby Moynihan, Bill Hader, and Fred Armisen doing their best impressions of the iconic cast. Hey, Tone. Silvio. Whoa, what are you wearing on your face? The shutter shades. They're totally rad. They're ridiculous. Take them off. Take a chill pill, Tone. They also acknowledge that the timeline doesn't quite work in a few meta jokes. It's hilarious to watch gangsters deal with the everyday problems of teenagers. Why do you think you lose your temper so often, Anthony? Do you understand the pressure that I'm under? I got a science project that's two weeks late, I'm five chapters behind in Taylor Two Cities, and I don't have a freaking date to dance. 
but there's also the addition of some 80s flair. You even get to watch Tony and Carmela meet, with Moynihan and Kate McKinnon giving two convincing performances. Do you want to go to the dance with me? I would. I'd like that very much. <laughs> That's too beautiful. I'm gonna moonwalk out of here. Number 16, Papyrus. In this wonderfully bizarre sketch, Ryan Gosling plays a man who's obsessed with the font of the Avatar logo. I forgot about it for years, but then I remembered that Avatar, a giant international blockbuster, used the Papyrus font as its logo. This sends him on an investigation that's hilarious and thought-provoking. Gosling gives this skit his all, convincing people to go along with such a crazy premise. You've shown me this before. I don't even think this is literally papyrus. Maybe that was a starting point, but they clearly modified this. But whatever they did, it wasn't enough! You don't have to know anything about the James Cameron film or the papyrus font to enjoy this one. The actor's performance really shows off his skills as a compelling screen presence, playing a guy on the brink of a complete breakdown. You'll probably never look at movie titles the same way again. I know what you did! Number 15, Calvin Klein ad. Kate McKinnon impersonates her fair share of celebrities as an SNL cast member. I'm a big boy now. Her work as Justin Bieber stands as a highlight, finding a way to blend the performer's personality and slick movements. This tattoo made me say out. Sending up the singer's Calvin Klein ads, McKinnon can get a laugh with just a look. It's a physical performance full of funny details from drumming to juice boxes. The chaotic parody follows the artist as he runs around, rides a scooter, and creeps out his co-star. It's closer to Bieber than you might think, but it's also an enjoyable impression full of outrageous comedy. I won't wear this underwear no more. My Kevin's. Calvin. Kevin's. Calvin's. My Calvin's. Number 14, Carrie Family Reunion. If you love this comic actor, you'll definitely find something to enjoy in this homage to his career. Jim? <laughs> Jay Carey? Oh my gosh. Great to see you. When did you grow into a man? Well, I started growing in high school and stopped. Right around here. Jim Carrey goes to a family reunion where everyone seems to be like one of his film characters. The performer interacts with some great impressions of his past roles, giving him a rare opportunity to play the straight man. It was a bear of a day trying to get this one out of bed this morning. John, can I talk to you over here for a second, please? Oh, so I'm the difficult one? <laughs> This includes coming up against everything from the mask impersonations to a surprise Dumb and Dumber reference. Hey, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? I don't think so. Yeah! Several SNL cast members come out to try out some hilarious takes on Carrie's catalog. The host ends up taking it all in stride with the ability to poke fun at his eclectic resume. Number 13, Beavis and Butthead. In a gleefully odd scene, Ryan Gosling and Mikey Day play two men who look like the animated characters. Professor, you've been very outspoken about the threat AI poses. Can you explain your stance to the average American? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, what? They end up sending this TV interview sideways as the host and guest get distracted. Heidi Gardner plays the interviewer trying to hold it all together, but she breaks several times at the sight of her co-stars. Sir! <laughs> we don't blame her either, considering what she's up against. The script digs into this silly concept while also letting the cast fly off the handle. Gosling loves to laugh on SNL, with this sketch giving him another chance to break. You don't know each other? No, no. Um, hi, I'm Dean. <laughs> I'm Dean. Jeff. Jeff. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah, to meet you too. <laughs> Number 12, Crime Scene. When a detective and a cop show up at a mysterious apartment, the latter mentions that it looks like a famous sitcom set. It looks like we got ourselves a real crime of passion, don't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we do. <laughs> hey, doesn't this place look a lot like the Seinfeld apartment? Charlie Day's character doesn't know the show, making all of his references that much more ironic. Jason Sudeikis plays up his confused role as the latter hounds his partner for not knowing about Seinfeld or baseball. Yeah, no, baseball. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, come on. Kid, I don't have a 
a TV. You don't need a TV to know about baseball. Really? Well, it must help because I don't know what you're talking about. There's even a cameo from a maniacal George Costanza with Bobby Moynihan giving the scene one more curveball. It's a dynamic and chaotic premise that always keeps you guessing. This ode to a classic show rewards fans of the series, but it's not the first time they've parodied a Larry David program. I am running for president. I do not shake disgusting hands. Oh Number 11. Liza Minnelli tries to turn off a lamp. Some comedy sketches don't need to make any sense to be effective. This one defies all logic. Bringing the laughs as an entertainment legend tries to work a lamp. Just let me truck him out over here! <laughs> oh, I see him! He's the scoundrel! He's the troublemaker right here! Kristen Wiig plays Liza Minnelli to absolute perfection. Want me to help you, Liza? Oh, Oh, you just relax. I just need to find the clicker or the switch that turns this whole cool, cool thing down. Full of sassy energy, this version of the actress loves to dance through her problems. We don't know why she can't turn off the light, but it's great to watch Minnelli scramble. Wig's performance is a tour de force in comedic nonsense that never lets up. By the dramatic finale, we kind of wish she could keep the plot going with more lighting fixtures. <sighs> And we missed the show. The heck with cats, let's dance! <laughs> Number 10. Musicians for Free Range Chickens The concept of We Are The World seems ripe for parodies that include this fully loaded scene. For this skit, SNL conjures up a fundraiser for free range chickens. The title is simple. Musicians for Free Range Chickens. The cast tries out their best musical impressions in a stellar lineup of talent. There's a diverse list of singers that show up, including impersonations of Wilson Phillips, Mick Jagger, and the real Michael Bolton. Now we understand. There are also some surprise appearances from the likes of Adam Sandler's underrated take on Axl Rose. The ridiculous lyrics only make this song even funnier, making for a fantastic mashup of 20th century artists. Number 9. Walking Dead Chappelle's Show Inspired by a pivotal scene from The Zombie Show, Dave Chappelle brings back some fan-favorite characters from his own series. I like two fleets. My mouth feels dry. The performer turns the Negan Bat moment into something that's much funnier with a different cast. Chappelle plays Tyrone Biggums and others like Lil Jon, showing viewers what it might be like to see these guys in a zombie apocalypse. I have a wife. What? Every step of the way, the comedian reminds people why he's a genius sketch player. As one head goes flying, this skit ends up giving the audience one more entertaining change-up. You'll probably want to see a full parody episode after it's all said and done. Now let's break out, y'all. I only got two months until they take away my health care. Body, if you will. Number 8. I'm just Pete. No one cares about the work I do. I made a show with Joe Pesci too. And no one streamed it but my mom. Pete Davidson has had nothing short of a complicated personal and public life. He's been very open about his struggles and relationships, with this music video providing him an additional outlet. Cause I'm just It's also a commendable parody of the song I'm Just Ken from Barbie. Davidson takes the part in stride, making fun of his life in an unfiltered sketch. It's both heartwarming and funny. I'm just beat. My dating life is not discreet. Not only that, an impressive parody homage to the 2023 blockbuster. The comedian isn't afraid to joke about his public image and mistakes. Through this song parody, the performer works out his inner demons with some killer production design. Are you ready, Pete? Sure am, Bobby. Oh, not again. 
Number seven, Land Shark. Nobody ever said a parody of Jaws had to take place in the water. In the Land Shark sketch, the aquatic predator tries to talk his way into women's homes. Telegram. <laughs> Just a moment. <laughs> His slick dialogue provides some of the funniest moments from the skit. Who is it? Flowers. Flowers for whom? Plumber, ma'am. The desperate efforts to get inside are funny on their own, with Gilda Radner's character and others becoming gullible targets. Chevy Chase plays the shark as both understated and completely entertaining, with Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi joining the scene with fun impressions of the Jaws cast. Oh my god! What is it? Egg salad again. Much like the Steven Spielberg film, this sketch received sequels that carried on the enjoyable premise. Number six. Nick the Lounge Singer sings Star Wars theme. Bill Murray was a standout during the early years of SNL, with this character ranking high among his best roles. Welcome to the Potter Room, everybody, up here at beautiful Meatloaf Mountain. I'm Nick Winters, and I'm here to entertain you, so sit back, have a hot buttered rum, and let it happen. He loves to jump into random songs and do some goofy attempts at crowd work. It permits the comedian a chance to sing and give a loving nod to Star Wars. His work as Nick gives the movie's theme some memorable lyrics, taking John Williams' music to a whole new level. Ah, Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Murray doesn't mind belting out a few notes in a bold performance. Leaning into the role's hokey presence, the performer relishes becoming a try-hard lounge act. You might even find yourself singing the same track after watching this sketch. Star Wars! Number five, The Shooting, AKA Dear Sister. Hey man, what you doing? Nothing, just uh, writing a letter to my sister. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, I, uh, I haven't seen her in years. It's, uh, it's weird because... What you say? The Lonely Island was full of imaginative ideas but few were as well edited as this one. This sketch's combination of editing, music, and surprises make it something of a groundbreaking piece. Dear Sister spoofs an episode of The O.C., but it's arguably become more famous than its inspiration. Mm, that it's all for the best, because it is. With some unexpected gunshots, the scene turns deadly as friends pull out weapons and fire at each other. Guys, I just thought of the funniest thing. What you say? By the time Kristen Wiig's character shows up, the skit really goes off as the shots keep ringing out. It's such an off-the-wall idea that begs to be watched over and over again. Number four, Hot Ones with Beyonce. Powered by the incredible Maya Rudolph, this Hot Ones parody really takes off. I, I cannot believe you're on Hot Ones. No, I, I feel you. I, I still can't tell if this is beneath me. Rudolph initially plays Beyonce as confident in the face of tremendous heat. The comedic actress disappears into the role, playing a sweaty and anxious remix of the vocalist. I'm not gonna drink a big fat glass of milk on camera. <laughs> That's not a good look for Yonsei. It's an effective take on the wing-eating show while letting you know what happens when the milk doesn't work. Fans of both the artist and the web series will find something to love here. No, 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 don't touch your eyes. Oh, I know that now, you bald ass bitch. Even as an exaggerated version of the singer, the former cast member helps create a hilarious disaster courtesy of hot food. The idea received a much needed sequel with more gags and another fun performance from the lead actress. Can I have your milk? Uh, yeah, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Number three, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Eddie Murphy was a definitive all-star on the SNL cast, playing all kinds of celebrities and original characters during his tenure. 46, 79, wow, that's a lot of money, boys and girls. Especially for a lady who can only afford to give me a quarter to carry this to her car. This includes his homage to the iconic host of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Murphy's presenter provides hilarious lessons to kids about all kinds of topics, 
including nutrition and dealing with neighbors. With his spin on children's programming, the comedian brings an unexpected edge to this new version of the series. The sketches rely on the performer's great timing, facial expressions, and sudden shifts from calm to angry. This is how you answer that door in my neighborhood. It's yet another example of why this comic is considered an exceptional talent. Well, I have to go now, boys and girls. So bye bye. I'm very happy tomorrow to you. Number 2. Vincent Price's Halloween Special With Bill Hader as the horror film star, this sketch brings together a lovable and strange mix of personalities. Tonight, prepare yourself for a night of spooks and scares as we have invited over some of our most famous friends for some tricks and also some treats. Haters Vincent Price tries to keep his cool as his celebrity guests show up and derail his program. From the film Sunset Boulevard, Miss Gloria Swanson. And from Lolita, Mr. James Mason. I'm a pirate. Ah. The scene features some stellar impressions from the likes of Fred Armisen, Kristen Wiig, and a fantastic performance from John Hamm. Gloria and I could use something a bit more upbeat. Uh, do you know this one? There once was a girl named Regina. Stop! Family show! It feels like the perfect way to send up a particular era of Hollywood. With everyone bringing their A-game, the special might as well be considered a holiday classic. Other incarnations of the skit welcome more talented guest stars, Liberace jokes, and incredible references to vintage celebrities. Hollywood legend, Judy Garland! Oh, let me in! Let me in! What, what's wrong, Judy? Oh, there's a tall, scary man outside with a big green hat! Judy, that's a palm tree. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Celebrity Jeopardy This recurring sketch never fails to make us laugh and love the contestants. Will Ferrell's version of Alex Trebek tries to wrangle an absurd lineup of absurd contestants. The sound a doggy makes. <laughs> Mr. Connery. Mool. <laughs> No. Well, that's the sound your mother made last night. With every question and wrong answer, the game gets funnier as cast members impersonate a wide array of celebrities. The highlights include Daryl Hammond's Sean Connery impression and Norm Macdonald's Burt Reynolds. Okay, Turd Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, what do you want? <laughs> you buzzed in. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. As contestants come and go, SNL hosts and cast members show off their zaniest work ever. Tom, let go of it. Let, no, not the jar. Let, let go, let go of the pickle. But I, but I want a pickle. By the time you reach Final Jeopardy, you feel like you've been through a whirlwind of sharply written and silly comedy. Let's see what you wagered. Suck it, Trebek. <laughs> Which SNL pop culture moment did we forget? Let us know in the comments. Sit down on the couch and flip on that tell you getting wild as a style of Keenan and Kelly. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.